In this video, we're going to discuss the triangle inequality in the real line. So the triangle inequality is an incredibly simple inequality. It's an incredibly intuitive inequality, but it is phenomenally important in real analysis. We will use this all the time, and therefore I do think it warrants its own video at the beginning of the playlist. So that's what this is. So it's an inequality all about the absolute value function. So we need to start by formally defining what the, is meant by the absolute value function. So this is a function that will be familiar to you from calculus. For all real numbers that are greater than or equal to zero, it's just going to map that real number onto itself. So it's equal to x if x is greater than or equal to zero. Whereas for all the negative numbers, it's going to map them onto their positive equivalent, so their additive inverse, so minus x. So that is this um, hopefully familiar v-shaped graph from calculus. So this is the plot of y is equal to the mod of x. So that's how we define it piecewise. The triangle inequality is then the inequality that says that if you take the mod of two real numbers, x and y, added together, that this is less than or equal to the mod of x plus the mod of y. That simple inequality that I've written there, that is the triangle inequality. And we're going to understand this and prove this in the remainder of the video. So actually the proof of this is very simple and gives you all of the understanding as to why this is true. So we'll just crack on straight away with the proof. So we're going to do a proof by cases. We're going to do three separate cases. So the first case we're going to consider is when x and y are both non-negative. So both of them are greater than or equal to zero. In this case, we can instantly conclude that the mod of x is equal to x and that the mod of y is equal to y. So the right-hand side of this inequality is just going to be x plus y. Let's now think then about what the left-hand side is going to be equal to. So what is the mod of x plus y? So we need to somehow know whether x plus y is going to be greater than or equal to zero or whether it's going to be less than zero. Now, of course, both of them are greater than zero, so we know immediately that this one is greater than zero. But let's just think about how you would analytically prove that in terms of ordered field properties. So we can take this inequality that x is greater than or equal to zero and we can add y onto both sides. So we'll then get that x plus y is greater than or equal to y. And then we know by our second inequality here that y is greater than zero and therefore x plus y is going to be greater than zero. So from this and this, by transitivity, we then get that x plus y is greater than or equal to zero and therefore mod of x plus y is just going to be equal to x plus y. So in that case, where x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero, this inequality is just say is an equality, in fact. It's just x plus y is equal to x plus y. So it's true in that case. Let's now consider another case. And the next case we'll consider is where both of them are less than zero. So x is less than zero and y is less than zero. In that case, mod of x is going to be the additive inverse of x. It's going to be minus x. And mod of y is going to be the additive inverse of y. So it's going to be minus y. Now let's think about what mod of x plus y is equal to. So again, we need to know whether x plus y is greater than or equal to zero or less than zero to know which of these piecewise definitions to use. So we need to, again, just like we did here, we derived that x plus y was greater than zero. We need to derive that x plus y, in this case, is going to be less than zero, which we obviously know it is because both of them are less than zero. But we need to actually see how we can do that in terms of the uh, rigorous order properties that we know. So let's start with the inequality x is less than zero, and let's add y onto both, hands, both sides, which we know we can do by the properties of an ordered field. And oh look, we can use exactly the same as what we did previously. So we have x plus y is less than y, and we already know that y is less than zero. So then we can apply transitivity to get that x plus y is less than zero. So that then means that we know that this is going to be the additive inverse of x plus y. So that means that we're going to get equality again, as long as we know that the additive inverse of x plus y is the same thing as the additive of in inverse of x plus the additive inverse of y. 
So the inequality will be true in this case. It will be an equality, which is true. It satisfies this if we know that the additive inverse of x plus y is the additive inverse of x plus the additive inverse of y. So how can we show that? Well, we want to show that this thing is the additive inverse of x plus y. So if we can show that that added to x plus y, so if we add this thing to x plus y, if we can show that that's equal to zero, so question mark whether it's equal to zero, if we can show that it's equal to zero, then we'll have our answer. We'll know that this is the additive inverse of x plus y. And then because, you know, our field, as far as addition is concerned, it's a group, and we know groups only have one inverse. Each element has one and only one inverse. You can't have two separate inverses in a group. It breaks the axioms of group theory. Uh, it breaks everything. Remember, basic group theory is that all of the columns and rows in the um, composition table must have every element appearing once and only once. Otherwise, they're never going, inverses aren't going to work if you have an element appearing more than once in one row or one column. So, and that's a basic fact of group theory. We won't get into it in too much detail, but if we can show that this thing is the additive inverse of this, i.e. that this plus this is equal to zero, then we'll have done that. So how can we do that? Well, just by... <laughs> additive associativity and additive commutativity, because at the moment this has brackets like so. So then what we can do is apply associativity here. So we can say that we can rearrange the brackets so that they're like that. The rule we're applying here is a plus b plus c is the same as a plus b plus c. That's additive associativity. And here we're considering this thing to be a and then we're considering this to be B and this thing to be C, and then we've regrouped it like so. Then this is becoming painful. I'll do just a little bit more of this, but we can do commutativity. We can rewrite this then as minus X plus X plus Y, like so. Then, whoops, missed a bit there. Let me rub that out. Should have a minus sign there. Um, and then we can apply associativity again to group these two together, the negative x with the x, like this. And this is why we usually just assume everyone knows and understands additive associativity and commutativity, but we'll do just a bit of it. I'm actually enjoying it. Negative x plus x is then going to be 0, 0 plus y, because by definition, negative x was the additive inverse of x. So... They make the additive identity zero. The additive identity plus any element is just itself. So this becomes y plus negative y, which is then, of course, just zero. Well done, me. So that's all the additive associativity and commutativity that gives us that. So yes, we do have that minus x plus y is equal to minus x plus minus y. Of course, we could have just used distributivity. We could have used the fact that the additive inverse of an element is just minus 1 times that element, and then we could have viewed this as minus 1 times x plus y, and then applied distributivity, but we did it this way instead. Um, so there, we for this case, we have again shown that this inequality is true because you do have actual equality. So if they're both negative... The intuitive picture of what we've done here, if we just draw a bit of the real line, is that first case was both of them were positive. So we have our x here, let's say, and then we've added on y. And again, y is positive, so it's like an arrow in the right-hand direction. So then you add on, and you get x plus y. And then this absolute value function is then kind of like the distance from 0 to there. And it's just going to be the distance from zero to x, and then how much you've added on, which is the distance to y. So that's why you've got equality there. And then on the negative hand side, of course, the intuition is here's negative x. And then when you add on another negative number, that takes you even more leftwards. So here's negative x plus negative y. Oh, and of course, this is bad because we've been calling, uh, putting these negative signs here actually confuses it. Let me just erase those away, because obviously we've been calling our negative number just x. We haven't been calling it negative x. Negative x has been its additive inverse, so it's actually been a positive number. So if x was a negative number, it's over here. 
And then if y was a negative number as well, then adding on y takes you even more leftward, even more negative. And then when you take the absolute value function, it's again like taking this distance function from zero to them. And it again is just going to be the distance from zero to x plus the distance from zero to y. So those two were very simple cases. They gave equality, but equality was part of the inequality, so it was true in those two cases. Now we'll do the final, more complicated case. So the final case is one is positive and one is negative. So we'll let x be greater than or equal to zero, and we'll let y be less than zero. We don't need to do the other way around. If we do it for one of them, then by symmetry for the other case where this one is negative and this one is the non-negative one, the exact same argument's going to hold true, so we just have to do one of them. And this, of course, is the more interesting one, the one which really the triangle inequality is all about. So on the picture, if you've got zero and you've got x here, and then you've got y here, then when you add y onto x, it actually takes you back to kind of here. So you'd have x plus y, and then you can see that the distance from uh, zero to x plus y is then actually not equal to the distance from zero to x plus the distance from zero to y, it's actually less than that. So in this case, you actually are going to get that less than part of this inequality. So it only, the equality is only broken when you're adding two numbers that don't have the same sign, one's positive and one's negative. So let's prove then that the inequality holds true. So if x is greater than or equal to zero, we can instantly say that mod of x is equal to x in this case, and if y is less than or equal to zero, then mod of y is going to be equal to negative y. Now let's think about what mod of x plus y is equal to. Well, this is where we actually have to split it into another two cases, because depending on how far y is along, you know, in this picture, y is not that far from zero, so when you add it onto x, x is actually further along in this uh, right direction than y is in this left direction. So x is more positive than y is negative. So when you add them together, you still end up with a positive number. However, if y had been all the way out here, then when you'd added it to x, you would have then ended up with a negative number. So we're going to split it into those two cases. So we'll split it into case one, where x plus y is still greater than or equal to zero. So this will be case one. And then we'll have case two, where x plus y is going to be less than zero, and we'll show that for both cases, uh, the triangle inequality is still going to hold true. So let's start with case one. So if case one is true, then mod of x plus y is just equal to x plus y. So if this inequality is true, we need to show, and this is to show, so I'll put a question mark there, that this is less than or equal to x plus minus y, which is what mod of x plus mod of y is equal to. So if we can show this, then we'll have shown for case one the triangle inequality holds true. So how are we going to do this? Well, we can sort of work backwards, do a backwards proof, see what we're aiming to get to. So we have x on both sides here, so we could add the additive inverse of x onto both sides to get rid of those, and then we just need to show, therefore, that y is less than or equal to negative y. So that's going to be reasonably easy. So we know that y is less than zero. So negative y is going to be greater than zero. How can you show that? Well, you just basic order of field manipulation, just add on the additive inverse of y onto both hand sides. So we have this inequality. If we add on the additive inverse of negative uh, of y onto both sides will then have zero plus minus y, which of course these two things cancel to give the additive identity, and then you'll just have zero plus this is just this back again, and that's how you can know that the additive inverse of y is going to be greater than zero. So then we have both of these inequalities, y is less than zero and negative y is greater than zero, so we can apply transitivity to that, and we'll have that y is less than negative y. And now we can add on uh, x to both sides, and we'll then have x plus y is less than x plus negative y. And then we can just turn it into 
less than or equal to, because that's fine. That it's still true. Uh, you know, this does imply this. So it's not true that it's biconditional, but you do have unidirectional implication there. If this is true, this is true. Uh, so therefore we have the inequality we wanted to show. So case one, yes, it's absolutely fine. The triangle inequality holds true. Let's do case number two now. So case number two, mod of x plus y is then going to be negative of mod of x plus y. And we need to show that this is, again, less than or equal to x plus minus y. Um, we can then split this thing into minus x plus minus y, as we've already discussed, is less than or equal to x plus minus y. This is what we're trying to show. We're just getting ideas for how we're going to prove this by manipulating it like this. And then, of course, we can get rid of this from both hand sides. So we just need to show that negative x is less than or equal to x, and then we'll have this. Well, again, that's going to hold true by a similar argument to what we've had before. So we've got the inequality that x is greater than or equal to 0. So by the same argument as we've had before, negative x is going to be less than or equal to 0. Just add negative x onto both sides, and you'll get 0 on this side and negative x on this side. So there's that inequality. So now what we can do by transitivity, this is less than or equal to this, and this is less than or equal to this. So we'll then have that negative x is less than or equal to x. And then we just add negative y onto both sides. So negative x plus negative y is less than or equal to x plus negative y. And I'm sorry for how crammed it is. We'll go down here now. And then we just factor out that minus 1 to get minus x plus y is less than x plus negative y. And there, we've got exactly what we wanted to prove here. So again, yes, the triangle inequality does hold true in case two. So we've now been through all the cases there and shown that this inequality does hold true. So we have proven it. And I hope that's given you an understanding as to why this is true as well. I hope you agree with me that that proof there isn't just a proof, but is actually very helpful for understanding why this thing is true. One thing just to say is that uh, this is incredible. We use this all the time in real analysis. We often use it in far more complicated formats, though. So often we'll be doing things like looking at... Uh, oh, we'll keep the blue pen. It's interesting. So often we might be looking at something like mod of A minus C, and we will potentially rewrite that like A minus B plus B minus C which we can do with just subtracted b and added b here, or added its inverse and added it. And then we'll be using then the triangle inequality on this thing where we'll think of this as x and we'll think of this as y. So we'll say that this is less than mod of a minus c plus mod of b minus c. Um, and then we'll have this original thing is less than or equal to these two things. So even though we've written it in an incredibly simple form here, I want to just, in these final few moments of this video, just emphasize this point that we can actually use it in all sorts of situations that look much more complicated. So it's a deceptively simple looking inequality that we can use all the time in real analysis. It's so important. So thank you for watching.